Welcome to another awesome video. Today we are looking at the Pioneer VSX 451 stereo receiver. That's right. Welcome back to the 1990s with 80 watts per channel, 7 inputs including a phono preamp and tape monitor. And the big story on this receiver is the V and VSX is for video. In the 90s, home theater was starting to emerge and you have all these analog video switching capabilities. You got surround sound called Dolby Pro Logic, which has some rear speakers and a center channel. I happen to have this handy dandy brochure here so we can kind of put this receiver in context with what else Pioneer offered. It was fourth from the bottom. It was the entry level Pro Logic receiver. The one below it just had regular Dolby surround. Pro Logic was that extra center channel. And above that, you get more wattage, nicer remote, etc. But Pro Logic was pretty much the surround sound offered at 92. And on the inside, you see CD players, tape decks, one turntable, and some other stuff. But the most likely source for surround sound was probably a VCR, a hi-fi stereo VCR. So let's talk about surround sound a bit. This receiver has four surround modes. Dolby Pro Logic, of course, the main mode, plus three channel logic in case you don't have any rear speakers. There's also two modes simulated in studio, which the receiver just simulates the surround signal and can be used for music or TV shows or whatever. And of course, you can also disable surround sound completely and just use it as a standard stereo receiver. So, do you know what the point of surround sound is? It, sa it sounds like surrounding and killing somebody. No, no. <laughs> you surround the... Not like that, no. But it does deal with action movies. The whole point is to surround the listener with speakers so that when you're watching a movie or TV show, you get a more realistic, immersive experience because you have all these sounds coming from different... Like a boom on the rear right, rear left, or rear Yeah, front. exactly, exactly. Today we have surround sound but it's a more modernized version of this. If you're watching a Blu-ray or you're watching a DVD, the file that you're watching has separate signals. So like, you know, 5.1 Dolby Digital Surround Sound, you have all those left, front, right channels. Hey, is Dolby also what made our editing program? No, that's Adobe. This, this is Dolby. That's oh, the, okay. okay. So on this receiver with Dolby Pro Logic, it actually uses just a standard stereo signal to derive the surround channels. So it takes your standard left and right channels and through the magic of phases or messing around with frequencies, it's able to decode a surround channel. I say a surround channel because it's the same signal going to the left and right, unlike the more modern ones, and a center ch channel for dialogue. Dolby Pro Logic had that center channel, whereas Dolby Surround just had the rear channel. But the whole idea is it, it creates this effect to make you feel like you're in the middle of the action. And I can't really demonstrate a rear surround signal over YouTube. However, to give you an idea of how effective this type of analog encoding could be, I'm gonna try a little trick here. I'm gonna play a bit of the 1978 song, If I Can't Have You, and then disable the main speakers to show you how the surround processing on this VSX451 receiver can almost completely isolate the piano to the rear speakers. Here's the surround speaker. Now we're gonna drop out the main speakers So simply by manipulating the original stereo track with left and right channels, we can get this. Now, obviously that's a very contrived, coincidental example, but you can see you know, how effective these encoding systems could be if you did everything to spec. In addition to surround sound, this receiver has a lot of other features. As I mentioned earlier, it has a ton of inputs, including a tape monitor loop. Uh, as you can see there, it has that handy flashing light. And you can switch the video signals for laser disc players or VCRs independently of the audio source. You can watch one thing and listen to another. It also has digital tone controls for treble and bass, which means you can set five presets, A, B, C, D, and E, in addition to loud and flat modes. The FM tuner is pretty impressive too. It can memorize up to 30 stations and you can access them either by punching the number repeatedly. So like number two gets number two and then 12 and then 22, or you can directly enter a station by keying direct access and punching in the frequency. You could enter an alphanumeric uh, name for every stored station so that when you go to that station, it'll actually display that name on the screen. And of course, Remote control. Everything on this receiver pretty much is remote controllable through a handy infrared remote. And now we're at the repair section, if you could call it that. If you're not interested in seeing what I did to get this thing working, just skip ahead about two to three minutes. 
The problem with this receiver is the right channel just drops out at low volumes and you simply manipulate the volume control in some way to bring it back. Here's an example where I've balanced it all the way to the right. Maybe you can hear it. When I turn up the volume control, the channel will come back. Since the volume control was not scratchy, I was first thinking maybe a capacitor or something like that was a problem, but then I happened to notice that the problem could be solved or created by simply tapping the speaker switches on the left side of the receiver. So after that, I was pretty sure the problem had something to do with dirty switches. The first thing I noticed after removing the cover was the extreme amounts of dust on the inside. After all, this thing is, you know, 30 years old. So the first thing I did to make this look better is clean it off with the air compressor just to kind of get the dust out. Then it was, how do I get to those switches? And unfortunately, the switches are mounted on a board that's underneath another upside down board that's attached to a transformer. Well, yuck. I really didn't want to get into all that if I didn't have to. I tried basically just forcing some deoxid into a little hole on the side of those switches. Then I repeatedly pressed the switches over and over again, probably 30 to 40 times. And that did the trick. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. And knock down some fun with new multiplier instant games from the Tennessee Lottery. It seemed to start working again. I listened to the receiver for about four days just as my main receiver and never had the scratchy problem again. So I guess that just goes to show you sometimes it doesn't take advanced repairs, just a good cleaning. So kind of wrapping up this video, this is a great receiver. It's got tons of features, tons of power. Why does it not hold its value like the Sansui here? I mean, aside from style, why is this receiver from the 70s valued so much higher today than the uh, Pioneer, for example? If we try to sell either the Sansu 77 or the Pioneer, I don't. I think the Sand, the Sansu 77 is going to win that battle. Yeah, the Pioneer. I think I just checked eBay is about $85. The Sansui can range from 300 to 800 depending on condition. It's just a cleaner interface. Like right here, these tone controls. When you set the tone control, there's lots of space around it. That is not only the indicator but it's also the adjustment. Here I'm adjusting, I have to go look at that display. It's kind of cramped, you might need your glasses. You know, I guess Yikes. I guess it's just a different uh, you know, style is probably part of it. I'm just gonna say, I, I've been using this uh, Pioneer all week for background music. I love the remote control. I like the fact I can connect every input to it. And they did include a motorized volume control, which is what you'd be adjusting most of the time. So in conclusion, I wouldn't let the fact that there's all this obsolete analog video stuff on here scare you off. It's still a very good, uh, reliable receiver and does a good job. Assuming YouTube doesn't delete it, we'll leave you with a little bit of piano flourish on the way out. And that's about it. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time for another awesome video. Like and subscribe, please. Bye-bye. Or I'll take your cookies.